Final mindset shift is to shift from the intellectual mindset to the spiritual mindset. What I mean by that? People tend to regard language learning as an academic intellectual exercise. So we think, oh, we just have to understand the concepts, the, the propositions and their logic. And once we fully understand the system intellectually of the Spanish language, uh, then we will know the Spanish language. But again, this is the tyranny of the propositional. We try to reduce the world to a set of propositions and, and think that's going to work for us in this big, complex real world. And it doesn't. If we get frozen, we find ourselves having no agency, feeling paralyzed, feeling incompetent, um, and it's not an intellectual endeavor, this language learning thing. Um, in fact, it's unlike many other, it's unlike any other thing you will do because we don't really reflect on it, but our language is so deeply ingrained in our self-identity that we don't even think about it. And when we talk about our self-identity and our social identity, this is some really deep, powerful stuff. This is our spiritual side, really. How do we relate to ourselves and to the world? That is a, a definition of what spirituality is fundamentally, right? So when you are here to learn a language, when you adopt the spiritual mindset, what that means is you understand that to on the path to becoming you know, a flowing speaker of your target language, you necessarily have to undergo a transformation of yourself, right? You have to create this new identity, step into that identity, and then present yourself to the world through that identity. And for those who have not done it before, um, it can sound like something scary or sound like something that um, is fake or you're false or pretending. Um, and it's not, it's not like that at all. You start off kind of playing around with these different roles and different identities. And then as you create new social relationships and new, new friends and new contacts and experiences, that becomes just as much a part of you as all the other experiences in your life, right? So I know um, I speak seven languages now and I only spoke English growing up, but when I'm speaking Spanish to someone, I'm still me, I'm still Idausa, I'm just Spanish Idausa, right? Or, you know, and things are slightly different you know, when I'm speaking Chinese versus speaking Chi uh, Brazilian Portuguese. Different traits and attributes are different for me uh, because I'm, I'm tapping into the kind of general themes of that culture. You know, so if I'm speaking Portuguese, I'm, I, Brazilian Portuguese, I tend to be more kind of jovial because that's how Brazilians are. So I'm like, yeah, you got it to the bay. No boss, no, he's not the same. Blah, 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 blah. Right. Whereas when I'm speaking European Portuguese, they're much more, um, you know, reserved and conservative people. So I tend to be that way too. Uh, right. And, and once again, I'm not, I'm not, um, I'm not uh, being a different person. I'm just being me, that version of me in the language. And you reflect on your own life. You know, the way you are with your parents is probably different from the way you are with your friends as different from the way you are with your coworkers, different from the way you are with your romantic partner. We have all these different identities based on the relationships that we're in. So you can see there's another one that you're expanding into. Um, but again, in order for you to do that, you have to go through this process of, of presenting yourself to the world as a, as a novice, as a fool, making mistakes, saying things, saying like a weird turn of phrase that ends up being like a really inappropriate joke that people laugh at you for. Um, but you gotta like, you know, roll the punches, understand that you're gonna run into lots of your social deficits and you need to improve upon those and you'll be, your vulnerabilities and your insecurities will be exposed to yourself in this process. Um, and I'm not saying this to scare you, I'm saying this to, to just let you know that this is what's laid in front of you once you start having conversations. And um, you can overcome them and you will overcome them if you put your mind to it properly. And it's extremely rewarding to overcome them and to expand yourself with the challenge. In fact, it's one of the most meaningful things you can engage in in life is to take on your spiritual mission. Um, but again, you have to be in that mindset so that when it shows up, you're not surprised by it. You know, like, okay, this could be really scary. It's, you know, face the fear, et cetera, et cetera. Whereas if I'm in the intellectual mindset and I run into those walls, and I see that spiritual challenge, a dragon comes, I'm like, ah, what's that? I can just kind of close that door and walk away and be like, oh, let me study some more propositions here because that's what language learning is. And then, you know, months go by and I'm kind of like, I'm still not good at this language. Why is that? Why? Because you are treating it like an intellectual endeavor, but it is way bigger than that. So that is my spiel on a spiritual mindset. Notice yourself 
if you have those tendencies, if you want to bury your head in a book, um, and then accept and be excited about the, the, the prospect of uh, going off and expanding yourself and taking on these new spiritual challenges.